In your documented argument, you'll need to use a mixture of quotes and paraphrases to support your ideas. So whether it's explaining how feasible and how useful the project that you're suggesting or the argument that you're trying to put forward, how good it is, how beneficial it's going to be for folks, or whether you're just using research to say, here's the problem and here's the context behind the problem, you're going to need to use research and quotes and paraphrases to support your ideas. Last video, we talked about quotes. In this video, we'll talk about paraphrases. Paraphrases are where you take material from a source, you word it in your own words, and you use roughly the same number of words as the original source material. And through all that, you're telling your reader where that information came from. Paraphrases can be super helpful because when you read paragraphs and there's a lot of quotes in them, it can be a little distracting. Even if you're careful about transitioning between ideas and commenting upon quotes, it can reading a paragraph with a lot of quoted material feels like you're getting interrupted all the time and all these other people are starting to talk. Paraphrases keep you more in control of the writing, um, of the story that you're trying to tell through your research. Here's a really important issue to keep in mind, though. If you don't tell your reader where that paraphrased information comes from, you could be plagiarizing. Plagiarism is where you take the ideas of others and you pass them off as your own. In my 15 or so years of teaching, in all but two or three instances, students have not intentionally plagiarized. They do so by accident. They paraphrase something and they forget to tell people where the information came from. They quoted material, but they forgot to put the quotation marks around something. It's usually by accident. But even if you do it by accident, it could still land you in some trouble. So let's learn really quickly how to do a paraphrase, and we're going to use the quote that we used in the last video, and the paragraph that we used in the last video, to talk about quotes. So we're back in our sample paper with our table of contents over here on the left. We're still in that context section that we were using for the quote. And this is the quote that we had in the last video. So we have the setup to the quote, where we're talking a little bit about the, um, the expertise or the credibility of the source that we found. We have the quote itself. We have a transition between the purpose of the overall paragraph and the quoted material. And then we have some discussion of the quote afterwards. We want to take this and we want to turn this into a paraphrase. And a lot of the same principles apply. And here's a paraphrase that I wrote of that quote. We still have information about the source. We still have transitioning from the ideas of the entire paragraph and the purpose of the entire paragraph to the upcoming paraphrase. And then we have the paraphrase itself, and it starts kind of at the end of this paragraph. So this is the original quote, and this is the paraphrase. Um, so experience particular risks, um, I went with unique problems with addiction, and I put that in its own sentence. So the trick with writing a good paraphrase is to make sure that you're not using a lot of the language or the sentence structure of the original quote. So this original quote, it has a list of three items. Rural residents experience particular risks, and then here's the list of those things. So I took the particular risks, and I reworded that as unique problems, and I put that in its own sentence. And then the following sentence includes those list items, and I split things up a little bit um, in a way that wasn't included in the original quote. So these researchers found that people with addiction in rural communities develop addiction at a younger age, use injectable drugs more compared to other community types, overdose more often, and contract infections like hepatitis C. So the same ideas, but they're um, worded differently. Um, if you're using, if you, if you did higher rates of injection and you use that as the paraphrase, it's too close to the original material. You want, you need to reword things in your own words. A good way to do this, to go about doing this, is to not have the quote in front of you and to write in your own words without looking at the quote. What is this quote trying to communicate? And that's what I did up here for this material here. Something that's really important to, to keep in mind, again, you don't have quotes around this because it's not a quote. It's not a direct quotation from your source. It's a paraphrase. It's in your own words. So there's no quotation marks. But I include the citation at the end of the paraphrase. If I was to just do this and put this at the end of the paragraph, a reader is not going to know where that paraphrase is at. Is it here? Is it this sentence? Um, is it the last sentence? What's going on here? So you only put the citation 
you put it near the paraphrase when you're using paraphrase material. That's what I, what I wanted to show you about paraphrases. They open up a lot in your writing. Instead of relying on quoted material, which again, it interrupts the flow of the writing a fair bit, you're able to use in your own words um, the research that you found, but you're able to get it into writing that seems more like you. Um, again, you have to tell readers where this information comes from, but it kind of, it's nice to read an essay that has that uses quotes sparingly and uses more paraphrases to communicate research. So you're going to try that out for today, but I hope it's something that you really work with for your documented argument. Our last conversation today is about transitions. Let's get to it now.